I can show them and say, that's where your cancer is hiding. That's where it's alive. And that's where the medication went. And when we give you the therapeutic version, that's where it's going to deliver its radiation. And that's a very calming thing because it's very visual. Um, it's hard to ignore. And, and it's actually true. There's a new class of drugs called radiopharmaceuticals, which deliver radiation therapy specifically to certain cancer cells. That's what we're talking about today on Tomorrow's Cure, a podcast from Mayo Clinic that brings the future of medicine to the present. I'm Kathy Worzer. Thank you so much for being with us. We have two special guests today. Dr. Jeffrey Johnson is joining us from Mayo Clinic. He's the chair of the Division of Nuclear Medicine and is a radiologist and nuclear medicine physician. In the interest of transparency, you should know that Dr. Johnson is the chief scientific officer at Nucleus Radiopharma. That's a drug manufacturing and supply chain company in collaboration with Mayo Clinic. Also joining us is Dr. George Sogoros. He's the director of the Radiological Physics Division and is a professor of radiology and radiological science at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. He studies what kinds of doses are needed for these new therapies, again, known as radiopharmaceuticals. Thank you so much for being with us, gentlemen. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Kathy. Likewise, a pleasure. Let's talk about radiopharmaceuticals. The research I have done on it, wow, it is, it is truly amazing. We're talking now about targeting radiation therapy at the cellular level, but delivering radiation directly to cells isn't itself a new approach. I'm curious, Dr. Skoros, as a pioneer in this field, what changed? You know, we've been treating cancer for I don't know how long. Uh, I mean, modern 75 years. So with agents that, that, as you said, with chemotherapeutics, and we never really know where these things are going. Are they targeting the cancer or, or where, the, where are they going? So this new approach, actually, we can generate images that tell us where the therapeutic agent is going. So it's no longer the black box that it's always been. And that's really a fundamental difference in this treatment. The beauty is we can literally make a three-dimensional image of a patient's body, and we can see exactly where the medication is at any point in time. And we can prove to ourselves that they're not going anywhere but the cancer. And as a result, the side effect profiles of these are phenomenally good. So would you both say that these radioactive drugs work better than traditional radiotherapy or chemotherapy? There's a whole bunch of effort uh, replacing the current radioactive atoms with ones that emit alpha particles. And that's a whole new game. With alpha emitters, Cells don't even have that opportunity. It's not, you know, changing a cell to not behave like a cancer cell. It's just outright killing the cancer cell. I say that's the best way. The best way to, to kill a cancer cell is to kill a cancer cell, not change how it behaves. As we go forward, we're actually combining these therapies with chemo. We're combining it with surgery. We're combining it with external beam radiation and immunotherapy to try to use the, the different benefits of the two therapies and so we're looking to say, well, right at the very beginning, can we use these radiopharmaceutical therapies to stop the cancer before it spreads too far? And part of that is because these drugs have low toxicity, meaning they're, so they don't cause much harm, which allows us to move them into healthier and healthier patients who have longer and longer um, life because the toxic effects we're hoping will, will continue to be minimal. There's a study where they looked at giving these therapies prior to surgery to say, why don't we give a radiopharmaceutical therapy to kill cells that are around the cancer that the surgeon might leave behind? So it's called neoadjuvant or before uh, surgery and see whether we reduce the chances of the cancer coming back. So we're absolutely using them in, in literally every phase of cancer care in clinical trials. People are really afraid of radioactivity and radiation in general. And that's another one of these reasons that, that this field has sort of been limited. If we, can figure, if, if we can figure out a way of making people more comfortable with the idea that radio, radioactivity is, is key to, to successful treatment and not always bad, uh, then that'll make a huge difference for the field. What things might be down the pike when it comes to this therapy? I certainly do think, for the same reasons, I think that alpha emitters are going to make a huge difference. Um, you know, I think the imaging, the technology is going to also profoundly impact uh, uh, how these agents are used. A and I want to make sure that the, the clear message is that these are fundamentally different. They work by a very different uh, uh, mode of action in terms of how they kill cells. Uh, 
they're not agents that are looking to interrupt a, a cancer pathway. Uh, they are agents that, that kill cells. And unlike chemotherapy, they kill cells specifically in a targeted sort of precise manner. You know, I think like, like Jeff, I believe that um, we'll get to a point where this is the sort of the, the first line approach to um, having a patient show up and then looking at a, an, ar a, an array of, of potential radiopharmaceutical therapeutic agents. If you'd like to learn more, you can listen to the full episode at tomorrowscure.com. <laughs>